our next guest is Ganesh Rahad Krishnan, who is the CEO of Wharfdale Technologies. Wharfdale is one of the leading SAP integrators, infrastructure integrators on the planet. Uh, and we're going to talk to Ganesh. Welcome to the Cube. Uh, welcome. Great to uh, great to have you here. So, uh, Wharfdale, we were talking off camera, Ganesh. You were talking about how you guys um, really focus on delivering those high availability, mission critical applications of right around SAP. You're 100 percent focused on SAP. Is that correct? Sure. That is correct. Uh, so you must love this show. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, uh, this has been a great show. In fact, um, we as a company. Uh, we're in business for the past 10 years, and we had been uh, uh, one of the biggest integration partner for SAP and EMC, and that is what preliminarily we do in the industry. So, um, when you talk about integration partners, you're talking about taking infrastructure, applying it to mission critical applications, whether it's supply chain, ERP, et cetera, and, and then making it even more robust, is that is that right? Um, uh, what's your essential value proposition? Uh, basically, our value proposition comes in because uh, uh, within an SAP, SAP is a very complex application and when it is being implemented inside a data center, inside an infrastructure, it is uh, multiple technologies has to be stitched together. We call it like different uh, technologies like EMC as storage, Cisco as network, and other uh, technology server, we try to put them in order so that it can be optimally uh, operating within an SAP environment. So you've got you've got complexity all through the stack. You've got complexity at the infrastructure. You've got complexity at the application. Now you've got an exploding complexity at the device level. Um, and and you're talking about attacking that infrastructure layer, correct? That is um, absolutely right. So how do you do that? Uh, basically, we we go through the entire stack within an infrastructure because when you have to run SAP, the fundamental thing what people need to understand is storage, the backend storage. If you do not place the data in a proper location, the performance is going to really stagger. And that is our one of the major uh, partnership we have, uh, we have uh, done with EMC in the past years. So customers buy uh, like a Porsche, they buy an EMC equipment. If they don't get it configured right, uh, it will uh, it will perform terribly. So that is one of our major thing that we concentrate on. And not only that, it's not just the customer uh, data center, but it is also their disaster recovery. Their uh, high availability is very, very critical, and that is one of our other major initiatives we do within infrastructure. So there's a lot of talk these days about a, a, a single logical block of infrastructure. Uh, some people call it converged infrastructure. You know, obviously the, the EMC's V block. Um, first of all, is that something that you're, 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 you're using and what does it do for the complexity equation? Sure, uh, since uh, VBlock was announced uh, as a joint uh, initiative between EMC, uh, VMware and Cisco, uh, we had been chosen as one of their partners and we are part of SAP Cloud Advisory Council. We had been deploying VBlock for SAP. We had been doing multiple uh, proof of concept for customers. The major advantage, customer gain a benefit with VBlock, it is uh, complete infrastructure put together and it is like a prefabricated uh, hardware and uh, network, everything combined, which help benefit customers to get uh, those systems up and running faster. Ganesh, a question that I have for you is, and this has been coming up, is this idea of delivering on promises. SAP's changing their environment. They're dealing in a multi-vendor environment. They've been open. That's clearly an ecosystem strategy for SAP. Sure. Um, unlike Oracle, which is fully integrated, SAP has this open strategy. So what are, the, what are you seeing from your perspective around the new SAP? Because you know they are dealing with, with the big, big companies like EMC who have a huge presence in these big enterprises. What are some of the new challenges and what are the new opportunities that you see? Uh, basically, as uh, SAP has come a long way since um, uh, we are, I had been seeing SAP for the past 20 years and uh, with the new products, new technology, even though there are more complexity, SAP has uh, really worked hard to make it simpler for customers with all their new features, like enhancement pack rather than doing a full upgrade, or trying to come out with some landscape management tools which can help enable customers to do system refreshes uh, easier and also to help customers uh, transition 
or migrate their systems into the new areas like cloud computing. In fact, their business analytics is something which is going to be uh, really helpful for customers. Moving into cloud can help save a lot of cost because of the elasticity and the scalability they get within a cloud infrastructure. We've been hearing in the keynote around this uh, delivering on promises, increases trust, increases loyalty, increases employee satisfaction. At EMC World, you know, the sizzle was big data, but you know, the stake was, as Dave and I were talking, is the services angle. There's a services explosion going on, both from a delivery of services and also offering services via the cloud. How is the role of services in all this make sense? Because obviously EMC has VCE and all these new integration points, it kind of changes changes the definition of services. So when you talk to CIOs out there, they have to look at two services from two angles. One, people who deliver services to them, and then the services that they have to then deliver to their customers. What's changing in that, in that uh, landscape? Uh, basically, uh, what we feel in the market when we speak to the CIOs, we see that there is a great opportunity and uh, uh, there is a lot of improvements a customer can gain out of this cloud computing and SAP, coming out and uh, really certifying this cloud computing is going to enable customers to really utilize unused resources which they uh, primarily have within, a, within their data centers which can be uh, eliminated. Like for example, the non-production systems in a typical SAP landscape, you could see that if there are 15 production systems, there are about 80 to 85 non-production systems. Now, even if the customer have the worry in terms of security of not moving their production system, they can ex extend their network into a virtual private cloud, whereby putting all their non-productions into a cloud, which can help customers save a lot because non-production development test trainings are not being used uh, from evening 5 p.m. till the next day morning. So that, those resources, as pay-as-you-go model, is going to uh, do a lot of cost reduction within SAP data center. On the services side, Jim Snobby, the CEO, was on here yesterday and we were talking, and you know, and we were talking about you know, how he handles the partners like, like EMC, and he highlighted the notion of best practices, and he mentioned a statistic, I think Dave was like, I don't know, a big number of best practices that have accumulated over the years, and that these are essentially becoming prefabricated opportunities to essentially lock those in as uh, opportunity services. The role of best practices were mostly more of a reference architecture. How is the role of best practices changing on the services side? Meaning, if there's best practices out there and they can be harnessed either on demand or mob with mobile, how does that change that edge scenario with mobility and so on? Because if they can be tapped as a resource rather than some case study, uh, what, can you share with us kind of how you see that market? I mean, I mean is it going to be like libraries of best practices that you can just use? And how, is that going to be integrated into the software world? Uh, basically, uh, as we all understood, uh, no uh, single SAP customer is having a typical implementation or installations. So every SAP customer differ uh, slightly from one one customer to the other. That being said, over these all these years, a lot of best practices has been uh, put together, but it is not so that it has been implemented in every customer sites. Now with all these best practices going to get harnessed together into the prefabricated as uh, with the V-Block kind of technologies, and also uh, EMC has uh, partnered up with other players in the industry for tools which can help enable them to deliver a better product for customers so the customer do not need to spend a lot of time uh, investigating how to make SAP runs better within their organization rather than they can concentrate on how to improve their businesses within their uh, company. You know, Ganesh, last year we didn't have a lot of proof points um, with the whole V-Block and SAP. It was, it was early days, we were a couple but it wasn't an overwhelming number of proof points. Can you can you share with us some proof points? Do you have any that you can uh, convey? Yes, uh, yes sir, uh, definitely. In fact, uh, as I uh, referred earlier, uh, we had been one of the chosen partners by EMC, VMware, and uh, Cisco for running these V-blocks. And uh, we had been doing this for the past uh, one year, and we had done uh, pretty much for uh, five customers in the industry right now. Uh, one customer is out, a uh, very big customer out in uh, uh, California. 
Uh, we have a customer uh, write out on the floor uh, like CAC. We did uh, a proof, proof of concept for SAP on HR. And we, we have done for a very big Cisco retailer called Vescon. And uh, the most important thing we have done right now is the biggest implementation which is going to take place for Columbia Sportswear out in the West Coast. We have uh, done their blueprinting and we are testing their proof of concept. In fact, uh, it is not just uh, we are using EMC VMware and Cisco, we also use some additional products which is which can help enable them to do a complete landscape copy within minutes. So you're largely vendor agnostic. We um, are vendor, yes. And and um, but obviously you're here talking about about VCE and and V Block. Um, it's it's kind of unique in the industry, right? I mean, there's you know, I mean, I've said before to me it's a two horse race. John, we talked about this. HP and in VCE are really going after this opportunity of converged infrastructure, um, but it. It somewhat changes that uh, position of being a, a platform agnostic, given that you've got a value proposition that is somewhat unique, doesn't it? Absolutely, I totally agree with you. In fact, uh, we had been uh, given the opportunity as Warfordel Technologies to develop the best practices to put SAP on top of uh, VBlocks, and uh, we had been currently working on it to deliver those best practices so that customers can take uh, additional advantages rather than uh, configuring SAP on their own. Are application heads, Ganesh, buying into this? I mean, a lot of a lot of the application heads I talk to, they don't want to mess with the application. They just want it to run fast. They want it to be highly available. You know, let let cost be somebody else's problem. Are they buying into this notion of this logical block of infrastructure to support their applications? Um, is there still some friction there? What's your angle on that? Uh, definitely, because uh, we block the biggest advantage people are going to have is uh, with reference to private cloud, it is a very easier transition for customers to get to private cloud. Now, uh, with VBlock being prefabricated and it is already there, uh, customers can take uh, real good advantage in terms of not only scalability, which they had been gaining with the virtualization technology, but they are also gain, going to gain uh, elasticity that factor is going to help a lot and uh, people can do a lot of, if they go into a private cloud with a single uh, dashboard, they can control uh, all the factors. That is the major advantage. Uh, right now people have been suffering to control storage, to control uh, their servers, uh, as well as uh, their virtualization component. Now, VBlock is giving that opportunity to have a single interface to do that and uh, they are also working more to integrate like schedulers and backups and uh, other factors like a push button to do a DR. So Ganesh, I got a question here from somebody on Twitter and I wonder if I could get your perspectives. Uh, VBlock in many regards is simplifying the infrastructure, right? I mean, uh, we can agree on that. Um, that right? is correct. Okay, yes. so the question from somebody in the audience is complexity in an SAP context is a synonym, synonym for billable hours. Right, you're in the systems integration business, <laughs> yeah. and then people people have made billions off of SAP complexity. Curious to see how SAP's ecosystem will react on this notion of simplicity. So, how do you feel about that? Uh, definitely, I feel uh, more uh, confident that uh, this technology is going to help customers. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, it is going to make things simple because uh, they have a lot of templates which people can deliver systems. Basically, I'm talking about provisioning and SAP systems. Today, customers feel it really hard to provision a system, but whereas in a V block, that has been made very, very simple. Most importantly, as I pointed out earlier, a lot of resources within an infrastructure is being not utilized properly. That being said, if you can use test systems or sandbox systems, those resources in the nightly times of leveraging uh, to create additional application servers on the fly uh, during the night times, which can be retired in the morning before other people can come in, which can leverage to run your batch processes and other processes uh, more, uh, more faster and uh, within their uh, SLA time. But you're not worried about lost revenue? to your business? 
of this, uh, this whole simplification. It's not going to, you're not looking at that as a lost revenue opportunity. No, you're this is not going to be a lost yeah. revenue. It is going to be an added advantage for customers. Do you, do you think some system integrators and services companies will look at it as lost revenue because they're living off of SAP complexity? Or do you feel like that's just a... Uh, an old, outdated 1990s model? Uh, not really, because see, every time a new technology is being introduced in the market, it's always that technology integration companies get new opportunities, because the complexity is always remains the same, whether we are talking V-Block, whether we are talking, because it's not just the V-Block. V-Block provides you the compute, uh, it provides the network, and it provides the storage at the back end, but still you have application complexity which still need to be managed. Kinesh, the, um, the, the vision that they're putting forth out here in SAP Sapphire in Orlando 2011 is mobility in memory, actually speed, reach with mobility, and then end-to-end -end processes is kind of their core messages. Uh, one of the things that we dug out of EMC World, Dave and I, was that um, there's some downstream impacts to this, as they say, the value chain of you know, the businesses, customer support, and disaster recovery are kind of like those other things like, oh yeah, big vision, you know, cloud, mobile, it's great stuff. But ultimately, like, there's some other meat and potatoes stuff that goes on, like, hey, okay, does this change my customer service equation? Does mm -hmm. this change my disaster recovery equation? Do you have any in angles on those two points and how the delivery of using mobile and cloud changes the customer support angle and also more importantly, the disaster recovery? Because of the new data sets out there, all the new data, I mean, we got Avon that uses an example, 6,000 people throwing more data into the system in real time, that changes the game on backup and recovery, disaster recovery and customer support. What's your angle on those two points? Yeah, that's a very good question. I really appreciate you asking that question. Definitely, the moment uh, customers uh, come into virtualization world, I call it like they are going to deal with a file, no longer it is a block. The moment it is a file, uh, you can easily move around. That gave the simplicity within a V-Block environment to easily do a disaster recovery. That means you can move from point A to point B seamlessly with a push button. Uh, again, we, we have to understand that uh, we are dealing with systems which are on an x86. We are talking about mid, medium, high customers can take a lot of advantages with these new technologies. And uh, what is going to happen with cloud if customers are moving in definitely there are certain things which customers have to look into it like backups are going to be different because currently uh, to the international standards or to whatever the requirements of country based like SEC or Saab and Oxley they have to keep those tapes externally those are all going to be slightly different but the benefit at the end is going to be what customers are looking at. The CIOs of companies are really trying to look what, how to take advantage of this to reduce costs. With this current economy, it is going to definitely help uh, data centers or companies to take advantage of these new abilities, like particularly on the mobility computing. Now, with that being said, customers can access these systems from anywhere. Now, those complexity what they have today from external world to access those systems through a VPN, secured VPN, all those stuff, is still going to exist in cloud, but it is going you're saying to be because made of the, simple. You're saying because of the file, the, the move from block to file, essentially changes the game on the operational and technical architecture. Absolutely. And that will change the game on the delivery side, service side, on customer service, because they can get stuff faster to the edge, and on the backup side, because they can backup side, and disaster, disaster recovery side, because they can deploy new techniques, is that what you're saying? That is absolutely right, uh, because I just wanted to share to the customers, to the viewers, uh, about disaster recovery. Think about a game change in a disaster recovery. Today, customers, SAP customers, are uh, managing a complete disaster recovery site. Think about, uh, with this new cloud computing coming into play, how about a customer moving their disaster recovery into a cloud? That being said, the storage replication will be happening from their on-premise primary data center to a cloud provider, uh, but all the systems, what is required for them to bring up a disaster recovery, those systems can be configured and it can be kept down, it can be shut down. 
because of a pay-as-you-go model, these disaster recovery systems do not need to wait and customers do not need to incur those expenses. Uh, during a testing phase or during the real DR scenario, they can step up and they can bring up these systems according uh, to whatever the primary system requirements are because of the scalability. Well, this cloud, the cloud disaster recovery, first of all, I love that that vision. Um, but there are issues in the news today we're hearing, you know, we're reporting that 99% of Android phones leak secret account credentials. Basically, the majority of Google and Android operating systems are vulnerable attacks that allow people to steal information. And we heard Jim Snabe say on stage at the keynote that they are absolutely hyper-focused on not letting that thing out. Now, when you get into the moving stuff into the cloud, can you just share, obviously, this? you've got to protect that. Uh, how, how do you view that? And, and you've got to answer, and the critics got to are going to come out of the woodwork and say, you know, cloud's not ready for prime time. So just address that, because that's what's on everyone's mind right now. Uh, good question. Uh, that's a good one. Actually, basically, uh, that hackers are still going to be getting more and more smarter. We all understand that cloud providers are really working very, very hard to protect uh, going forward. In fact, uh, there was a survey done by uh, research firms that clearly states if Typical data centers, their network, their network security, when they surveyed, 98% of the companies, I'm talking about SAP customers, enterprise customers, lack true network security. They do not carry a good backplane which can stop these hackers to come in. So that being said, a cloud providers, because they have to go through all those certification requirements, and today, federal government of US has decided or running already things on the cloud. With that being said, they have they are working very hard. They are protecting the backplane much better uh, from hackers' attack. But these kind of incidents are we going to see. But to answer your question directly, this is not just going to be in a public cloud. In a public cloud, people are going to create a virtual private cloud. It is a VPC, which is going to be protected. It is going to be your extended network into a virtual private cloud. I think that can help secure this kind of problems. So it's a great conversation. Saying, I mean, this disaster recovery day, we've talked about this. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that it's in between the toes details that we say, but it's it's really mission critical. Well, but Ganesh's point is that, that a cloud service provider is going to have better practices than many, let's say, for instance, small or even mid-sized businesses, right? I mean, that's the, that is the fundamental right. premise. There's a flip side of that. Of course, the, the one of the evil twins of the cloud is obviously security, and, and, uh, and, and so, uh, you know, we've got to, as an industry, and we heard Pat Gelsinger talk about this, design, look at new ways of designing security in, but I, I agree with you. I know that as a small company, we look to cloud service providers and you see some of the security practices they have, they're much better than what we could do on our own. So and I think that's a point well taken. Um, we're here with... In ahead. fact, uh, EMC, I just want to share the last point. EMC, as a product company, had been working pretty hard, and one of their uh, major thing is uh, their uh, acquired uh, RSA, and since their acquisition of RSA, they had been working pretty hard to harness these data to be more secure. So people can do encryption on these data going forward. Those things are also happening at the same time. I just want to share that. We're here with uh, Ganesh Rahad Krishnan, who is the CEO of Wharfdale Technologies, a big infrastructure systems integrator. Ganesh, it was great to have you on. Thanks for sharing your perspectives. Good luck with uh, with the new SAP initiatives. Looks like you guys are, are blazing new trails, and uh, thanks again for coming on theCUBE. Sure, thank you, Wait, well, thank you.